here at MTD CNC, you know we talk a lot, we learn a lot, we share this with you. Today I'm standing in front of Kid Amura and I'm with my buddy Nate where we're going to learn about what happened inside of HDM Hydraulics to help them succeed even more thanks to this Kid Amura machine. In my opinion, testimonials really connect with you guys out there because it's not me saying it, it's not a sales guy saying it, it's the guy using the machine, creating success from the machine. So let's touch base and first start with reliability. We're at HDM, Nate. Reliability is kind of important here, isn't it? It is probably one of the most important parts for us to maintain our on-time delivery to our customers, because without our customers, we can't purchase great equipment like this. What happens, Nate, as I look around, I see a bin full of chips here, a bin full of chips there. I see parts probably in the millions, it feels like, certainly in the hundreds of thousands. What happens when something isn't reliable? How do you feel internally? What happens inside your well, shop? It's, it, it stops, it creates log jams. So when one piece of equipment that's creating parts for our cylinder stops producing our cylinder parts, all the rest of the parts keep flowing. And then we get a log jam, we can't weld, we can't assemble. Now our on-time delivery is affecting other customers because it backs up the pile. And I think this story resonates with a lot of folks out there because at the end of the day, unless we're just having some downtime or it's a slow area, that happens. That's the bottleneck. That's the importance of reliability. So Kit Amura has brought that to you, right? Absolutely, far above the, 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 the expectations that we had. Uh, we are now have one of the most reliable mills in our department right now. So getting into reliability, we have to start with the complications that sometimes come to why we need that reliability. So let's talk materials. Let's talk horsepower requirements. Let's talk, you know, day shift, night shift, middle shift, all running. When it comes to that reliability and what Kid Amira brings to the table, what has this machine done specifically that has allowed you to do that? So a couple things is we have a lot of larger diameter drills and larger face mills. We're only machining 1018, so we're really not machining some of the stainless steel or the inclinels that other people are machining. But we have that horsepower because cycle time is very key for us. So we're doing really aggressive machining, real aggressive hole drilling, and we need that reliability. And then we turn around and have to deburr those parts or using a 3 16th drill where we need to kick those RPMs up in the same process. So being able to go from that range of the high torque to the high RPMs has been seamless for us. And then as you mentioned, we all know that second and third shift, just nobody wants to work those shifts, right? I know I didn't when I started. I hated working third shift. So now that we don't have to man that shift and we can just have somebody that loads it before they go off on their day shift and then it runs and having the reliability that the parts come off the next day and they're just good. Kid Amura has been, and you've talked about this a little bit, but Kid Amura is known for not reducing the casting size. They want to be rigid. They want that base. They put money into the spindles themselves. Before diving into this Kid Amura machine, did you have issues of a spindle torquing out or not being able to make the cuts or a, or a longer cycle time because maybe you had to peck instead of cut? Yeah, we definitely had the problem where we couldn't push our tools like the tool manufacturer said we could, right? Just didn't have the horsepower. We weren't getting the chip breakage that we wanted. We weren't getting the maximization of the, the, the tool, the face cutters. So we just had to baby those tools. Takes a lot of extra different mill steps to get to the depth. Now, half inch depth to cut in an end mill for a, it, it is nothing for us. Going in with an inch and a half drill hogging through without a peck, just blasting through is nothing for us now. Nate, I'm gonna mention this because you did and I hadn't thought about it before now, just for the audience as well. You mentioned we might have needed more steps in the process to get the same thing done when you can plow through now. That's more toy holders that are held up when you can now get with the one and then maybe do more operations because you're not utilizing the tool holders in that section. Well, that was allowed us to do redundant tools. So you can run lights out, yes. right? So you run your macros so that you can, your tools that are gonna wear, you're not going to get the tool life out of a quarter inch drill that you do on a three inch face mill. So I need more quarter inch drills to get through my process. So not having to have multiple tools to do the same step allowed me to put redundant tooling in the machine. Yeah, that makes sense. Now I'm going to play a little bit of Jeopardy with you, whereas I'm going to give the answer and you get to provide all the details that go to it, right? <laughs> So for everyone watching, Nate took a 60 minute overall time and reduced it down to 20 minutes. That's the answer. How did we get there? We got there by being able to 
gang up multiple parts on our tombstone with the 500 millimeter pallet and the envelope that the Kitamura HX500 offered us, allowed us to put more parts on there and allowed us to be more aggressive to reduce the base cycle time down, but then add all of our deburring in there by using the Zybeck tools that are very small, require high RPMs. So we were able to have the horsepower to do reduction in cycle time, multiple steps in one, then be able to cook up that 2,000 to 20,000 RPMs to go in there and deburr the part where we were a half an hour to machine the parts. Then it was a full half an hour of outside processes before we had a finished good part. We now can machine the part in 15 minutes and added 10 minutes worth of deburring and now we've got a finished part in 20 minutes. Nate, just from your perspective, being in a shop, the magnitude of your shop here, what type of importance, what type of significance do you think having the torque on the heavier stuff and the RPM for the smaller diameter stuff all in the same machine, all in the same capability without having to move parts around all the time to get things done, whether it's the mistakes that humans sometimes make or just the ability to get it all done and put it into almost a shipping container after that. What kind of significance does a machine bring for that? Well, for us, it was a huge significance because when you have a manual operation, 100% inspection is only 80 to 75% effective, right? So you're going to have escapes that get downstream. And through our, our quality process, we always tried to plug it with the operator needed training. The operator needed training. The best training in the world is still only going to be 80% successful because it's a human being, right? Fatigue, heat. It's hot in here today. You go all day in here and you're going to make mistakes. The machine process is not going to have the mistakes. So when you're able to do that deburring with those fine needle tools that need those higher RPMs, less escape of defects downstream, better constant flow of parts getting to our assembly, which is evidently more parts getting to our customers on time. And the customers like that answer, don't yes, they? Yes, they do. And in a situation like this, I can only imagine the reliability of the machine spindle and thermal expansion. I mean, that's a conversation for another day, but it's important to recognize that yeah, as the, well. Yeah, the, 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 the robustness of this machine, the, like you said, the casting, the weight takes all the vibration out. You don't have the chatter. On these tall 500 millimeter pallets, you get up near the top of there, some machines just don't have the weight to absorb that vibration. You get chatter in your finishes. We don't have chatter in our finishes. We can be as aggressive, and on some of our blocks, we hold a 16 surface finish up at the top in one pass. Ooh. I mean, it's fantastic. So that, it's that huge. That is fantastic, that is huge. All right, let's talk about now automation and flexibility and seamless integration to go along with it. To my understanding, this machine was here, and then the automation and the growth of the tool changer came a little bit later. Was it seamless? Was it complicated? How quickly were we able to get that done? Well, I, I can tell you that it was only a week to get the whole pallet changer in operation and running. So we bought the machine. We quickly found out that we need to get more in front of it. So we bought the machine. We were only running two pallets. Found out quickly that that just wasn't going to cut it. We need to feed it more. Uh, so we definitely invested into the pallet pool system. Uh, the, the support team from our supplier, great. They came in, they got it all running. Within a week, we were running parts through the pallet changer. The other step of that was we learned that the 60 tool changer was not enough to have our redundancy. Now we got these eight pallets plus the two in the system, 10 pallets running parts. We needed more tools. We quickly expanded to the integration package to a 200 tool changer, and that only took a couple days for that to get fully installed two more days for integration, and we were up and running production, which is huge for us because we did this in our busiest record time, Wow! record business. So we were at our record peak business and we still were able to take this machine down and get it running. Well, with Nate's custom work holding, a little shout out to you, by the way, your custom work holding, I can see why you need more tools. We're gonna jump into your partnership and service and support with your friends in just one minute. But I have to ask the question, have you ever been a part of a situation where the pallet change and the machine itself were integrated from two different companies and it wasn't quite as seamless. Have you ever run into a situation we, like that? We, we have. We had another machine where we tried to do that integration and wasn't successful. We ended up eventually getting it connecting. It doesn't communicate now. We use the machine every day. 
but the integration wasn't as seamless as this was. It wasn't as successful. When it all comes from the same place, it seems to make a lot of sense, It does, because it? it all speaks the same language. You're not trying to teach it different languages. Kind of like us right now. Yeah, We're exactly. speaking the same language, I think. All right, let's get to your service and support. None of this, I think, is possible without the right teams to work with, right? We can't do all of this on our own. And in my opinion, something in time will eventually go wrong. No matter how great we are, something in time is gonna happen. So let's give a shout out to the team that you work with that helped you understand just how important this kit of mural was gonna bring in your machining life. Well, Great Lakes Machinery is the main reason we went with this route. We had a great service with them before and they brought us a solution. So Great Lakes Machinery here in Lancaster, New York did a fantastic job of bringing a solution, turnkeyed the solution, and brought us to market with a great option. And Great Lakes, this isn't the first one they brought in, is no, it? No, we've gotten a great track record with them with exceptional equipment that is brought together with great reduction in cycle times and increased our throughput. So you're saying, I'm going to do it, bad dad joke. You're saying Great Lakes Machinery puts the great in machinery. That's it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Nate, thank you so much for your time. That was a really great explanation of how this is all working for you. For everyone who's watching, if you have questions, comments, anything you want to add or have questions for Nate or Great Lakes Machinery, leave it in the comments. We want to hear from you as well. Thank you all for your time. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you again soon.